Hi everybody, this is Angelo Quinones and you reach Iron Ministries. Iron Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holiness bond with the Bible, the Bible. Now, um, let's pray before we study this uh, topic um, that's in front of us on uh, on uh, the new the new building, the new building that God has prepared for us, meaning the new body that we're going to have, okay, after the resurrection, okay, after the resurrection from the dead. Well. Lord, we come to you glorifying your holy name because it is great and you are great. We just praise you for who you are, for what you have done for us, preparing us for so many things, and we didn't deserve them. So we just come to you asking for the forgiveness of our sins, O God, that you may cleanse these sins away uh, from your sight, that we may be well-pleasing in thy sight in, you know, during this Bible study. And then you indwell the speaker with power, boldness, assuredness, clarity, a recollection of things. Guide him into all truth. And um, I just pray in Jesus' name that we'll be edified and built up in the hope that's built up in Christ Jesus, our hope of glory. Receive our thanksgiving for the spiritual and physical things that we have received today. Especially your, yourself, the, the greatest gift of all. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, guys, this is the cool day. Now, this is the key. Now, this is this 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 this. this, this, this hi, my love. <laughs> I'm babysitting my my uh, my daughter uh, Anna Devane, and uh, so this is the cool day. Now, this is the key, like I said before. And this this is just the spell. No doubt. After this, this there shouldn't be any doubt. There shouldn't be any lingering. There shouldn't be any you know quarrels. There shouldn't be any debates. There's no annihilation. You understand what I'm saying? None whatsoever. None. Very easy. Very easy to prove. Let's read from a couple of verses of scripture here recorded. Okay. Um, uh, for, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5 verse 1 and so on. But let, let, let's see how much we're going to read. Well, we have to get into the full Greek construction of each verse. For we know that if the earthly tent that's our body the earthly tent which is our house is torn down we have a building from god a house not made with hands eternal ah uh, eternal in the heavens okay now let's just stay there let's just read one verse at a time Okay, because we have to go to the, you know, to the, the Greek and the full Greek construction and all this great stuff. Let's just read this again. This is quite clear. And this is from the, okay, the NASB. And I'll introduce other translations, but the standard is really the Greek. So it really doesn't matter uh, too much uh, bringing a whole bunch of translations and not getting into the Greek. Okay, the Greek is the standard. Okay, no matter what anybody says. It says over here, for we know, says the Apostle Paul, that if, okay, Greek word probably aeon, uh, the earthly uh, tent, okay, which is our house, okay, is torn down, meaning that it, that it dies, okay, we have a building, we have a building from God, ek uh, theu, I believe, ek theu, a house not made with hands, eternal, Greek word Ionian, in the heavens, in the heavens, and that's plural, so that's en, tois, uranois, I believe, in the heavens, you know, say what I'm saying, so that's just a deal, and quote, by the way, so this is saying, and this is three different kind of buildings here, Okay, uh, not 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 different, but because two are basically the same. You have the house and tent standing for the same thing. Okay, and building standing for something else that's going to come later. But I mean, you have oikia, Greek word there, skin uh, skinas. You see, very famous word. As a matter of fact, the Greek Septuagint is just peppered with uh, 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 skinas, and um, and uh, so that's just the deal. In the verb form uh, eskenosin. He tabernacled among us, and we beheld his glory. 
glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, I mean, he he had a, a tent while while he was here. But, you know, it's, 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 the thing about Jesus is that, you know, he, would, he tabernacled among us as Jehovah. That's a great, that's a big difference. That we're just, we're just, you know, strangers and pilgrims here. I agree, but we're not tabernacling um, around uh, as Jehovah, you know, in the flesh, uh, in the tabernacle. You know, the second tabernacle, if you will. You understand what I'm saying? Or the, you know, the second temple, if you will. You know, or third temple, whatever the case may be. So you got Oikia for house. Uh, skenas for a uh, 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 tent, you understand, and a, and a different Greek word altogether uh, for building. This is a proof. Now it says over here that it's eternal, eternal in the heavens. Now, in order for there to be a okay a a building, there has to be an occupant. Okay, in the heavens. So if the tent is et or if the building is eternal, well then the occupant is also eternal. You understand what I'm saying? You're not gonna have a building without anybody living in it. Now, when you read down on down the line over here, you understand. I know the Jehovah's Witnesses are kind of confused, and it mentions some other things that is just not worthy of. It says for for indeed, in this house, in this house we grown okay longing to be clothed okay longing to be clothed with our dwelling meaning the building with our dwelling from a heaven that's the building that he was talking about in verse one verse three uh in as much as we says the apostle Paul, having uh, put it on having put it on we will we'll not be found naked Okay, for indeed, while we are in this tent, meaning the body, he's talking about the body, he's not talking about a tent, a physical tent, you understand? In this tent, we groan, this is the second time that it says that, being uh, burdened, okay, being burdened because we do not want to be unclothed, but to be uh, clothed, so that what is uh what what is mortal will be swallowed uh swallowed up by life all right now um it's, it's, it's the same thing he says in the first corinthians chapter 15 that the mortal shall put on immortality and the corruptible shall put on incorruption so we're going to be clothed with with uh something that's uh, not going to do away with the form of form of flesh. In other words, the seed analogy in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is very important in verses 42 and 43. Okay, uh, it is sown, it is raised. It's the same it that's sown is the same it that's going to that's going to sprout up as a as a plant or whatever the case may be. Uh, we call it a one-to-one -one correspondence between okay, the, the seed and that which comes up. You know that that which is planted and that which comes up. You understand what I'm saying? So, what's going to happen? We're gonna we're gonna uh, uh, make a departure, okay, on uh, Lucy, okay, to the part to be with Christ, which is far better, and um, and he had a desire between the two. Okay, but then he, he, it seems that he broke away from having those two desires and only having one, which is, was far better anyway, a uh, carezon. And, um, and so he was left with one desire. You see, it was a tug of war for a while. Uh, well, should, I, should I stay? Okay, that's the fruit of my labor, a karpas, a Greek word for fruit. But if I, but if I depart, it's, it's much better to be with Christ, soon chrysos, uh, than to be, you know, here in jail and... Serving you, yes, but still not being of clothed. He's groaning over here. We groan, he says, actually in the plural. By the way, it's not the Holy Spirit that groans, okay, in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. We do the groaning, okay? This is an ample supply of, of verses, okay, that, that show that the believer groans, 
okay, because I was debating, uh, you know, Swami from Brooklyn, you know, Alexander Cruz, you know, JW slash uh, uh, Unitarian, and he was debating me on a debate which is entitled The Great Trinity Debate. And in that debate, he says, well, if the Holy Spirit is a person, why does he have to groan or whatever the case may be? First of all, that doesn't even make any sense because a person does groan, okay? You, you understand what I mean? But anyway, it, but we do the groaning. The Holy Spirit doesn't groan, okay? It says with groanings. He, come, he comes alongside our groanings. And, and by the way, let me get rid of this. It says in Psalm 102, around verse 15, that uh, the psalmist was groaning, actually. And also, you see, it, it is a lot of verses in the scripture that you know the the you know the the um, the the Christian groans. You see, also chapter hi my love, chapter one and chapter two of uh, of Exodus it says that the children of Israel were groaning uh, in, in the sight of God because of their slavery. So it's groaning all over the place. So the Holy Spirit doesn't groan. Okay, this is very easy to take care of. You know, very, and over here it says that 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 uh, uh, that the groaning that's going on is by Christian people. It says it twice over here already. Twice, two times it says groaning. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just the deal. So let's just read this again. It's quite clear that our um, house is eternal. Uh, the, the building is eternal. Now, if the building is eternal, that means we're going to be in that dwelling, whatever is going to be. That that body that we're gonna have, it's gonna be a spiritual body, but it's gonna it's gonna have physicality. It's still gonna be it's still gonna be based on substance. Okay, why? Well, First Corinthians, the book before this one, First Corinthians chapter ten spoke about spiritual food. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Spiritual drink and a spiritual rock. All of them have substance. So the 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 drink was given to the children of Israel from the rock. And it was a physical rock, and though it was called spiritual. And then, uh, what was it? Uh, a food, drink, and a rock. So uh, it's called spiritual, but so what? It doesn't mean that it doesn't have any substance, any, any uh, material. You know, not that we know of. Absolutely. It's another dimension. You understand what I'm saying? That's why when, um, when the, the spirit and the soul makes the departure, okay, to be with God, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, Okay, um, and you know the spirit goes up to be with God, and uh, the body goes down to the earth. You understand two different directions. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? You know, south north. You understand? And so, uh, so the deal is that um, there's no annihilation. There's no annihilation because I mean it, it. It it goes to be with God, and over here it says that we must all appear at the judgment seat of 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 uh, Christ. The bima, the bench, you understand what I mean? So there's no annihilation here whatsoever. Now, if somebody may say, yeah, but that's of the righteous. How about the unrighteous? I'm not going to be raised from the dead. It's going to be annihilated. It says who? You? From the tower? They got everything wrong? You know, magic wheat and corn and, and the business? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you're going to be getting the business over here. It says in uh, Praxis Apostle on the Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter 24, verse 15, that there's going to be a resurrection both of the just and the unjust. Greek word te for both. You understand? I believe it's te over there. All right, let's just read this again. This is quite clear, and let's really, really digest this. For we know, says the Apostle Paul, that if uh, the earthly tent, meaning our body, uh, remember he was a tent maker, so he's giving the example of a tent. And I believe that Priscilla and Aquila, okay, his uh, associates also uh, were tent makers as well, weren't they? Uh, let's get back to this. It says over here, for we know that if uh, the earthly tent, okay, uh, which is our house, is torn down, right? And when you tear it down, uh, that means that you're going to be moving. You know what I'm saying? It's torn down. We have a building. We have a building from God, okay? A house, okay, not made uh, with uh, hands, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. You understand what I'm saying? Now, uh, the first one wasn't made by hands either. Okay, uh, nobody's the creator. The creator is God. So you, you could, you know, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of procreation going on, but not creation by people. So it's still not made by hands. Uh, but but people have to do something with it. You know, even though it's procreation, it's not creation, but still. 
I mean, the, you know, the mother and the father did take part in the Apostle Paul's, you know, birth process. You know, is that what I'm saying? So that's just the deal. But it, but the the second, okay, um, the second uh, house, if you will, uh, the house in the heavens that he's going to have and that we're going to have, not only the Apostle Paul, uh, it's is going to be completely out out of out of the realm of, of people taking part of it in one way or, or another. Okay, we're not going to have any part in 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 the construction. Okay, of the second house, nobody's gonna pro this and pro that or whatever the case may be. You know what I want to say? And that is strictly uh, made by God, uh, made by God. You understand know what I'm saying? So that's just the deal. Now, um, let's get into the Greek. Okay, so the Greek is the standard, so let's get there. And so let's go to First Corinthians chapter, Second uh, Corinthians chapter of five, and verse one. Now, uh, let me see. Okay, so I was just looking for the we part of it all. Okay, we know, it says over here, oidamen, oidamen, and that's in the perfect tense, uh, oidamen. Uh, Omicron, Iota, and, uh, and uh, the second letter of the diff bomb above it contains two markers, a salt breathing marker and a cute marker, accent marker. And then you have the Delta, Alpha, and then the, the primary active personal ending men. Okay, seen everywhere in, in the Greek uh, 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 Subtuagent and in the, the Greek uh, New Testament. Primary active personal ending in the plural. Men, te, uh, unsi. You understand what I'm saying? So, oida men. Okay, we know. For, it says gar, post positive. Okay, so you, you translate that first. Um, and then after that says that hati, and then if and so probably a subjunctive is coming. That could, that's a nice clue that a subjunctive is coming. That's a nice clue for you to translate something that's coming up soon. Aon spelled out, uh, you know, epsilon alpha nu if and uh, if uh, the earthly, and so you know that that's. Uh, that's called that's uh, pronounced hey in uh, biblical Greek that article e in modern Greek earthly is epi uh, epigeas epigeas okay epigeas uh, of us uh, hemon uh, of us hemon a house the and that's oikia so the house is oikia is our body now, Greek word soma, our body, our present body now, the first body that we ever had, okay, the, our birthday suit, you understand what I'm saying? The sarks, the flesh that we have now, the basar, the or, all the Hebrew words for, for, for uh, 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 flesh and, and, uh, and skin, you understand what I'm saying? House, oikia. I spelled out Omicron, Iota, Kappa, Iota, Alpha, Oikia. The two, that's a, 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 a genitive article in the singular. Um, and a neuter. It's the same for the masculine, the, the construction for the article. There's 24 of them in Greek. Uh, tent. Uh, it, it says over here the tent or uh, uh, skenus. The tent, uh, see, uh, should be destroyed now there's there's a he uses two greek words to describe the body that we have now okay i'll give it to you in english first house and tent oikia hi my love oikia for house or, or house for oikia okay and tent for uh skenus or uh the lexical form is skenas okay you understand what i'm saying so that's just the deal. Uh, so oikia and uh, skenus in the text over there. So the, the two things are the same thing, a house and tent. Okay? So that's just it. Now, uh, that might help us uh, for, the, for future studies. If we run into, you know, house and tent and other scriptures, we're going to get the interpretation uh, from this text. This text is going to elucidate what tent and house means in other passages of scripture. It says over here should uh, should be hi my love should be dis, uh, should be destroyed. 
Okay, now should be destroyed is Cataluce. 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 Uh, Kappa, Alpha, Tau, Alpha, Lambda, Upsilon. Now they're called Ypsilon. Theta, now they're called Theta. And Eta, now they're called Eta with the Yoda subscript. Making that an improper diphthong with the circumflex overhead. You understand what I'm saying? So, Cataluce. Now the Eta... Okay, it's showing that this is, okay, this is a, and look at the genius of it all, okay, it's, it's killing two birds with one stone. That's a passive, uh, that's not what this is, uh, this is a passive construction, but at the same time, the eta is, is, your, is your subjunctive morphine, okay, <laughs> and the eta underneath that is really kind of telling you that in a sense in the circumflex uh, above it. So, kata uh, luthe is actually in the passive, but it's, it's, a, it's a subjunctive. The mood of probability or possibility should be destroyed. Well, I mean, you know, future more probable. Is, is, I mean, it's probably going to happen to everybody unless Jesus comes, you know, during our lifetime. So I call this future more probable. No, uh, should be destroyed. Now, what's destroyed? The soul? There's no mentioning of, of, uh, of uh, uh, Panuma here or... Uh, um, uh, uh, psuche. There's no, there's no mention. Uh, there's the house. It says, okay, um, does it say the house over here? Is there an article over here? Let me see if, if I can find one. Um, uh, of us, okay, house, our house, right? Our dwelling place, the house and the tent. The, the house and the tent are the same thing. It's the body. You understand what I'm saying? And that's, if that should be destroyed. It doesn't say that the that the soul uh, psuche would have psi, right? And then the and then uh, nefesh and ruah in the in the Hebrew New Testament doesn't have this either, um, uh, whatsoever. Uh, uh, describing that that's what that's what's going to be destroyed. It's going to be annihilation because if there's annihilation, the spirit and the soul has to be destroyed. Let's just face it. If there's no spiritual, if there's no spiritual annihilation, meaning of the annihilation of the spirit or the soul, there's no annihilation. There's no annihilation whatsoever. That's the key to understand, okay, the, the, the false doctrine of annihilation by the witnesses. You understand what I'm saying? Those JWs that are running around in their hot pants and their tights. You understand what I'm saying? And their skirts, you know, uh, uh, spitting out their propaganda like the dragons that they are. I'm just saying. Very, the, 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 the venom is poisonous. I mean, the venom can kill from a snake or, or a dragon. Uh, yeah, yeah, dragons. Well, you, you, you think they, they don't have them? Okay, in these uh, in these jungles and stuff like that, you got these you know thirty foot long you know snakes and stuff like that. That just one little bite, okay, can kill a man in a minute. The venom is so deadly in these snakes. You understand what I'm saying? That's just the deal. That's just all there is to it. So that's over here, house that could be destroyed. Intent could be destroyed. Okia could be destroyed. Okay, uh, uh, skenas can be destroyed. Destroyed. Uh, should be okay. Uh, destroyed, but destroyed in a sense. Not that, that that God can't can't raise it up again, though. It could be. It's destroyed. It doesn't function the same way that it did before. Like I'm saying, look at look at the news with the CNN. Um, the C, the news on CNN. Yeah, the former president going around, flying around, doing whatever the hell he wants to do. And I, I, I have to say it like that because so you could get the, the, the force of it all. Doing what, the, whatever the hell he wants to do, selling his uh, mugshot on T-shirts and on mugs and stuff like that. There's going to be none of that. None of that. Now, the Apostle Paul is not talking about judgment here, or, or, or the judgment of the unbelievers. But I'm just saying, this, uh, you know, was destroyed, okay, whether you are a Christian or not a Christian, is the capacity to do the same things that you did before. Okay? That's destroyed. Okay? I mean, as Christian people, we're not going to do everything that we did before, but even more so for the, for the non-believer. I mean, he's not going to be flying in his jet, his uh, 707, whatever the case may be, and, and you know, going to trial, at, at, you know, be, <laughs> and on his T-shirt he says, uh, you know, never surrender, and he surrendered four times already. 
Trump. You understand what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. He got indicted four times. And he's, he's still doing whatever the hell he wants to do. Uh, camp campaigning to be president. What a disgusting shame that is that the, that the United States have, have no laws against that. Is the 14th Amendment? Okay, fine. But nobody's using it. But do you think that... And, and, and the guy from Russia that just died recently. Okay? Uh, you know, a leader of a PMC or PMCs, you know, you know person, uh, or personal military, uh, um, uh, uh, personal or uh, military company, okay, did whatever the hell he wanted to do, flying over here, flying over there, shooting over here, shooting over there, you know, uh, was Putin's uh, uh, chef for a while, and put him on the map and stuff like that, and try to make a coup, and down he goes, no more PMC, no more training, no more fighting in, in Ukraine, and no more this and no more that. It's over. So all of that is, is, is you know, the capacity to, to do the same thing that you did before is destroyed. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the hope of a believer. So let's get back. So I'm just saying that the, what's annihilated is, is the activity, is the work. That's annihilated. You, you, if you want to say that's annihilation, you can go on ahead. Yeah, that's annihilation, but of the things that you used to do. No more work. No more planning. Ah, huh? those things are recorded, not life in Ecclesiastes chapter 9. But let's get back to this, though. All right. Uh, it says over here, okay, should be uh, destroyed. Okay, kata luthe. Uh, spelled out uh, uh, kappa, alpha, tau, alpha, lambda, upsilon, like I said before. And then uh, theta, eta. And that's a subjunctive to move the probability or possibility. Now, if that is, if that's, if that's going to happen, that our body is going to be destroyed, not the soul. Doesn't that over here, Panuma, like I said before? A building. Now, this is the new body. Oika da main. Oika da main. Ah, oika da main. A building. Ah. Now, in the Book of Revelation, okay, we're called tabernacles, uh, also. So that's just the deal. A Building, okay, from God. We could not from our parents and not from anybody else, no genealogy or anything like that. Not that we do it ourselves, no. Ek theu, from God. Okay, the preposition ek there is taking the genitive theu. Without the article, by the way. Okay? Where's uh, uh, from a God? Ah, huh? that's just the deal. You got to look at the context. That's what we're saying in John one one C. Look at the context. It can't be a god. Why? Well, I mean, you know, the Holy Spirit safeguards that 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 false teaching of a god found and recorded in John one one C. Because the two Greek words are different in in uh, Mount Transfiguration's account. Okay, for the transfiguration of Jesus. Two different Greek words. Now, to the audience of Matthew, uh, they wouldn't have thought uh, what the audience of Luke was going to think. Okay, uh, Matthew chapter uh, uh, 17 and Luke uh, chapter uh, 9 and Mark chapter, uh, you know, 9. Um, Luke uses a completely different Greek word because if he didn't, then his Greek audience was going to think that Jesus uh, turned into a God. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit did, want not, did not want people to think. So if he didn't want people to think it there, why does he want people to think it uh, uh, in, uh, think about that? Like that <laughs> in John 1 1 C. It doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? We have, okay, uh, Echamen, okay, from Echo, I have, right? You got the connecting vowel Omicron there. And actually, the Omicron swallowed out, uh, swallowed out the Omega. It's, 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 it's about time that the bully, kept, the bully gets punched in the nose. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the Omega is, is the Pac Man of all letters. It really is. Even though there are letters that are dropping all over all over the place like flies, you know the dentals and the the the, the tau, the, the 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 delta, and then the nu comes comes out comes apart. You know I call them new optional, and the sigma is allergic to to two vowels uh, surrounding it sometimes and drops off. I mean so like trapdoors all over all over the place in Greek. All right, so that's just the deal. So it says over here we have okay. Okay, echamen, and the primary act of personal ending man is there as well. A house, okay, oikian, a house, huh? uh, not made 
with Hans. So building a house is the same thing in the future as saying a house and tent uh, for our bodies now. It's basically the same thing. So you have two words for our body now. Uh, it's sort of like a, like a, a, an example, a metaphor, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, a house and tent. Okay, so you have two different uh, uh, words. Uh, n not every not every uh, uh, tent is a house. You understand know what I'm saying? So you have two different words over there, and then uh, and then uh, and two different words for our future. Okay, our body. You understand what I'm saying? So you have uh, building and, and house. It's, 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 you have house, house over a house. <laughs> house over a house. You understand what I'm saying? My love. It's me, daddy, my love. Not made of with hands. And my love. Not made with hands. Aje ra poetan. Okay? Not made with hands. Not made with hands. You understand what I'm saying? Not made with hands. That's just the deal. Not made with hands. It's just a, 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 listen. The one who who made it, okay, is God. That's just the deal. Eternal. Oh, wait a minute. I thought that we weren't eternal beings. Well, I'm just saying. If we if we have an eternal house, that means the 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 occupant has to be eternal also. In order the house to be eternal, because if the house is not eternal, the house the house falls. The house stands for nothing at all except the occupant is in it. You know what I'm saying? In the heavens, anyway. I mean, you can have a house, you know, Beth Sarim. That's a, you know, you know what I mean? I mean, the tower said that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was going to come back, and they never did. Yeah, they had two cars there. I wonder what what happened. Jacob, you know, somebody stole Jacob's car. Uh, you know, Isaac was laughing too much. He couldn't drive, and Abraham didn't have a license. What's the deal? They had three people coming. Why only have two cars? Ah, come on, man, you frauds! And then you sell Beth Serene, you know, in in the, in the cloak of secrecy. You see, uh, California, California dreaming. That's what you guys were doing at the tower when they sold it right under your nose. Beth Serene, but that's a helicopter shot of Beth Serene, House of the Princes. You know what I'm saying? Beth means house, and Sarim means princes in the plural because of the, you know, the yod and the, and the mem, you understand what I'm saying? Making a plural like susim, cherubim, uh, uh, serafim, uh, you know, uh, elohim, huh? Panim, you understand what I'm saying? No, you, you do. Oh, okay, yeah. Just like Russell knew the letters of the of the Greek alphabet that was on the wall and cart. Come on, man, stop with, stop with your charades. Come on, stop, man, stop, stop it. So the way eternal, <laughs> Ionian, eternal in the heavens. Okay, uh, 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 en tois uranois. You understand what I'm saying? Ah, I'm just saying this is delicious. I mean, eternal in the heavens. This is listen. We are eternal beings. We are created after God's own image and likeness. You understand what I'm saying? We are the only beings outside of the angels that were created to be eternal. You understand what I'm saying? That's just the deal. We're not going to be annihilated, man. We have to give an account of the deeds uh, done in the body, whether good or bad. And that's the Kirk. That's the church. How about the ungodly and the sinner? Where, where, where are they going to appear? And there's going to be the resurrection of both. I uh, found a recorder again. Praxis Apostolani, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24, verse 15. It says that both are going to be resurrected from the dead, the just and the unjust. That knocks away the stupid pretense of the tower of teaching falsehood to you guys in, you know, pamphlets or booklets. Like, uh, you know, uh, uh, what was that disgusting book that came out um, in 1984, 1985? I mean, that's just a deal. Reasoning from the scriptures. By the way, get uh, reasoning with Jehovah's Witnesses or something like that, uh, and reasoning uh, reasoning with Mormons or something. It's a title to some effect by Ron Rhodes. Great books. I had the the, the uh, reasoning uh, um, reasoning with Mormons, and so I, I never read it though. <laughs> I had it as a big book, but uh, if this is, is if it's as big as uh, the one. Uh, uh, Reasoning with the, uh, reasoning with Mormons than the Jehovah's Witness one, uh, the reasoning with Jehovah's Witnesses should be great as well. I mean, he's you know a wonderful, 
wonderful teacher of the word of God, especially when it comes to eschatology these days. All right, guys, so what did we learn? Well, listen, it talks about, okay, uh, a tent and house and tent. And that has to do with our first body. The body that we have now, the, the house or the tent. House or the tent, you understand what I'm saying? And then we're going to be clothed with a building made without hands by God himself. And that's called a building or it's called a house. You understand what I'm saying? You understand, right? So, I mean, you know, that, that, there's no annihilation. There's no annihilation. But, you know, the mortal, uh, you know, ship will put on immortality, it says in First Corinthians chapter 15. And the seed analogy is very great. Let's get there before we, we close. Anna, my love, it's me, Daddy, hon. Now, let me see. I just see if I can make this brighter and brighter, guys. It's, it's, it's too dark. Okay? I mean, you know, I just couldn't resist. <laughs> brighter and brighter. This is the deal. All right. So let's go to um, the, uh, the NASB again. <clears throat> All right. And let's go to, uh, let me see. If I could just go like this a couple of times, I could get into 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15 quite easily. Okay, so that's just a deal. Now, let's go to uh, verse 42. Okay, let's see over here. Uh, verse 42 right over here. Now, one of the Greek words is spedeta. I remember this, uh, the spedeta, something like that. It says in verse 42, So also is the resurrection, probably Greek word anastasis, of the dead. Okay, it is, look at that. It is, meaning the body. It is sown a perishable body okay it is raised see it is raised it is sown it is raised it is sown it is raised it is sown a perishable body it is raised and okay imperishable a body now verse 43 this is the coup de grace it is sown in uh dishonor it is raised okay in glory it is sown in weakness it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, and body is there now. It is raised a spiritual body. Okay? But you have to understand what I said before, echoing what the scripture said in, in this very book, a few chapters uh, before this. That in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it talks about, okay, three things that are spiritual, yet they still have substance. Let's get to that before I close. You understand? I can't resist. Okay? Let's get to chapter 10. Okay? And it's not that, that far away. For I do not want you, okay, to be unaware or ignorant, as another translation, brethren, that our... Our fathers, our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed uh, through the sea and all were baptized or identified into uh, Moses in uh, into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now verse three, check this out. This is the coup de grace. And all ate the same what? What? Spiritual food. But it was food. They all ate it from it. The children of Israel. And uh, verse 4. And all drank the same spiritual drink. You see? For they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them. And the rock was Christ. You see? Verse 3 and 4 talks about three physical things, but they were called spiritual. They're called spiritual. You know what I'm saying? That's what it said. Now, let's look at the Greek before we, before we close, okay? All right, so let's go to the Greek of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4. And these... Words here are very, especially, you know, pneumatikas. I mean, pneumatikas. Um, is, isn't it easier just to say pneumatikas? Just to say the old-fashioned way, like the barnhouse way, than pneumatikas? I think you have to just pause on the P to say p 
and stretch it out a little bit and, and just go into pneumaticos because it's very hard to say but not but but that's, uh, <laughs> it's hard to say so um there's going to be a triple feature here that's very interesting that really has to do with the first thing that's material even though it's called spiritual and is amazing it's sort of a triple feature in uh, in uh, some manuscripts it goes uh, back to back in the back and a belly to belly to belly like John Sterling would, would say you know uh, if the Na if the New York Yankees ever hit a home run I mean it's just that's just the deal let's get to the Greek now it says over here okay now let me see if, if I have everything unhighlighted because I'll be very helpful now this is chapter Iota which uh, chapter Iota or you know our equivalent to that in English is I uh that's chapter 10 in in greek okay at least you know in this app anyway and so that's just a deal now and then it has a three over there uh, chapter 10 verse 3 it says over here let me just read it okay and remember i am legally blind so i i can't read fluently like i like i can you know like i, I can recite greek fluently if i know the verse you know and i you know, and I hate in alagas, kai alagas, in prostante, an kateas, in alagas, you know, a little bit more clumsier than uh, than uh, the reading in modern Greek of John 1 1. Uh, you know, that's why they got rid of the, the you know, the, the, the A and the I and the R, ah, you know, they just got rid of those sounds. It's just very, very clumsy, you know. Now, so um, just, just have mercy upon me because I am using a magnifying glass here. Uh, and not my machine like I used to use in the United States of America. I used to use, you know, put, you know, my Greek New Testaments or whatever the case may be on a tray. And then the display um, is visual tech. The display will, will display it in a large print away from me. I don't have that here. I don't have that machine. It was way much too heavy to bring over here as, lug as part of luggage, you know. So, I mean, you know, I just have a little old, uh, it's very powerful, but a, a three section um, um mat, you know magnifying glass and th th you know i'm stuck with that you know so i'm gonna do the best i can okay i am legally blind by the way i, I have optic optic uh optic atrophy and that means that i see everything in a very miniature minuscule or tiny way and let's get back to the greek over here <clears throat> it's all over here kai pontes uh ta alta broma uh Pneumaticas. <laughs> I don't want to say it with the P. Uh, pneumaticas. Eh, Ephagan. Ephagan. Now, uh, verse 4. It says over here, Kai Pantes Ata Alta Pama Pneumaticas. <laughs> Actually, Pneumatica would have known. Pneumatican. And then it says over here, Epion. That's an Aris tense. And Epinan. Epi and epinan, and that's an imperfect tense. And we just saw uh, uh, the other word over here, uh, bama, which also uh, can mean drink. Uh, quote, gar ek uh, pneumatikes um, akaluthu says. Okay, and then it goes on to say, uh, Petras, ahe de Petra, en ha. Christas, okay, and that rock was uh, was Christ, okay. So let's let's look at all of these um, Greek words separately. Kai, copulative connective uh, linking word connecting, um, like it's a connecting, it's a conjunction. Kai spelled out uh, K A I uh, kappa alpha iota with a grab marker. So it's not Kai, it's Kai. And then you have uh, Pontes, which is very the the the, the pont paradigm or the post paradigm is very helpful to figure out mount set to figure out okay uh participial constructions meaning the, the case ending of them anyway okay it's a very helpful paradigm when he was talking about uh, participial constructions that the participle has uh, a verb part and a noun part okay so uh so it's very helpful that paradigm uh, uh pont or uh, or pos very helpful uh, for that uh, end. Kai Pont is an SRP alpha nu, nowadays called ni, tau, nowadays called tough, epsilon sigma, and or, okay, the same, okay, ta alta, okay, that's ta alta, that's uh, neuter, ta alta, uh, broma, 
and that's uh, the word food, uh, for food in Greek. Okay, broma. I wonder if we get breakfast out of that. I, I have no idea. Uh, uh, beta, now they called Vita. Rho, Omega, with the circumflex. Mu, now they called me. And then Alpha. Broma, which means food. Okay. <laughs> and here it goes. Okay. Uh, pneumatic, uh, pneumatican. Pa, pneumatican. You know, I hate to say pa because it's, there's no acute marker there. To, 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 to sort of lay accent of that, of that syllable. But you have to do that. It's very hard to say pa pneumaticas. Oh, I just said it. Okay. <laughs> pa pneumaticas. Okay. So just say pa. Instead of p pneumaticas, just say pa with a, with a, with a ah. But, I, I, you know, that's cheating a little bit, but who cares? P, nu, epsilon, upsilon. Now it's called epsilon. Epsilon. Uh, mu, alpha, tau, iota, kappa. Omicron. Now it's called omicron. And nu, now it's called ni. With a grab marker over the omicron. The last one. Okay. The only one, as a matter of fact. Spiritual. So, uh, so Brahma is called spiritual, spiritual Brahma or spiritual of uh, food. Uh, the the next word is in the aorist tense. Okay, I believe it's an A I A, uh, active indicative. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, aorist indicative active. That's the augment right there, the epsilon, right? That's that's equal to the E D in English, if you will, you know, for example, for purposes anyway. Epsilon with two markers, uh, soft breathing marker and acute marker. So it's A. Eh. And then you have the phi, which is equal to the uh, pe when it's soft in Hebrew, or our pH in the word like Philadelphia and stuff like that. Alpha, gamma, omicron, nu. Okay, e, ephagon, actually, ephagon. Okay, eight. That's in the aorist tense, ephagon, you understand? Now, verse four. So um, they all ate of the spiritual food. So one thing is called spiritual in verse three in Greek, okay? You understand? So that's just the deal. Now, even though it's called spiritual, okay, pa pneumaticas, or pa pneumatican, or whatever the case may be, there's several constructions of a ha. It doesn't mean it didn't have substance. It doesn't mean it was, it was. I hate to say immaterial, because, uh, well, I mean, in, in that case, yeah. In that case, yeah. I mean, you know, um, it, it doesn't mean it was uh, uh, of, of a non-material nature, Okay. So that's just the deal. I'll take that back. <laughs> okay, you understand what I'm saying? So that's just the proof uh, um, in the in the pudding there. Verse four says over here, Kai and all. So same construction, Kai Pontes, and all, and same construction following Ta Alta, the same. Okay, from Altas, uh, and all the same, Kai Pontes uh, Ta Alta, uh, Pama. And that's uh, uh, drink, okay? That's a noun, pama from pama. P O M A. That's 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 a noun. That's not a verb. That's that's just you know uh, that's um, um, <clears throat> that's uh, that's uh, spelled out uh, P A M A or a P omicron uh, mu alpha with an acute marker over the omicron. So pama. Palma. You have to read it like an Italian would read it. Like Palma. Like that with an accent. You understand know what I'm saying? And then spiritual, it comes right after that again. Okay. Panumatikan. Panumatikan. Palma. Panumatikan. Okay. Spiritual um, drink. Now remember the broma was also spiritual. The food. Now the drink was a spiritual. Meaning the water that they drank. Ta alta, ta alta broma, okay, uh, penu, penu, uh, penumatikan, uh, ef, efagan, efagan, now verse 4 again. Kai uh, pantes uh, ta alta, uh, pama, penumatikan. Now, the um, first uh, word, okay, remember the, the pama means drink, and, and uh, it says over here, uh, and and drank, drank is in the past uh, tense. As uh, Aris uh, A I A, uh, drank, uh, Aris uh, indicative active. Okay, uh, epsilon p iota omicron nu. Okay, and then you got, and then you have um, the separation there from this that clause to the next. Uh, so that's in the Aris tense. They all drank. From the uh, Pama, 
from the drink, from the rock. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so that's what the Aries says. The upcoming word, okay, epinan, is in the imperfect tense. And it looks almost the same, doesn't it? It's just a, a new separating the whole deal. Okay, the imperfect tense and the Aries tense have augments. Okay, so that's the same. And, um, and so uh, basically you got uh, epi here, epi, and then instead of epion, you have epinan. You understand? So that's just the deal, the imperfect tense. But in perfect tense, uh, personal ending is here. I believe in the plural uh, because it can be new in the two uh, situations in the in the third person uh, singular and the third person plural. Uh, the, the third person singular is optional. I call it a new optional. People call it a new movable. And so... Um, so I believe that this is the the, the plural uh, uh, personal ending from the prime from the secondary, okay, secondary, um, secondary, uh, secondary active uh, personal ending chart, okay, not the primary active, but the but the secondary active. So so that's that's the new over there. Just like the ta is the is the is the third uh, third person singular for the uh, 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 passive or secondary passive, you know, like uh, again it's all like that, you understand? So anyway, you have over here, okay, and I have to I have to close soon. Epion, epi uh, epi epion epionon uh, for and that's gar ek from. Uh, spiritual pneumatic case this time pneumatic case uh, from the spiritual and uh, that's in the genitive this time uh, to pneumatic case uh, uh, so the the ek uh, the preposition ek is taking a genitive okay um, um, and this is uh, accompanying okay this accompanying and this is uh and this is a, a, a participle because of the usa here. You only see, okay, us, but it's really usa. That's one of the participial morphemes. And um, and then you have the case ending, eta and sigma. And then uh, the rest of it uh, before it, anyway, is aka lu tu seis. Tu seis, okay? From Usa, that's a that's a participial morphine. One of them, anyway, accompanying, accompanying them, okay. Uh, and it has over here Petras as a rock, one of like three different rocks in Greek, basically. Okay, you have Petra, Petras, and uh, Lethos. You know, uh, over here I can see Kenneton. Uh, is his writings, uh, the Greek historian is is very key to understand the difference between. These things, the difference between a ledge and a rock you can hold in your hand, you know what I mean, like that. Very key to uh, in studying, okay, uh, was Peter a rock or, or or not? According to Julius Armenti, he took that uh, the writings of Kenneth and and, and really explained uh, the difference as well. Not a straightjacketed rule all the time. All of those are uh, kinds of, of of rocks, but still very helpful. Um. Ek penumbati case akalu tuses accompanying uh, Petras rock. Eke uh, he de Petra and the rock, okay, was a. That's an imperfect tense. So you got two imperfect tenses, uh, uh, two imperfect uh, structure. Uh, uh, structures here, the A and then the other thing that we saw before, beyond, be uh, epion, epinan. Ain was uh, ha Christas. Now you can translate that in, into into Hebrew and say uh, was the Christ if you if you want to do that. But I mean, you know, it's a, a straight uh, translation is was okay was Christ, okay Christas. Now, if you want to say it was the Christ, that's that's not wrong to say it was the Christ. You know, that's just perfectly uh, legal. Now, let's get to this uh, situation over here. And let's read according to uh, verse 8, because I want to uh, 
I want to check something out. It says, thus we are full of uh, courage, says the Apostle Paul, and uh, would uh, prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Away from home and um, and present in home. Okay, if you if you want to put it like that. All right, let's look at these Greek words. Okay, and then let's close our study. Let's close shop. The first one is tagged by a fifteen fifty three. It's actually ek de meo, ek de meo, spelled out epsilon kappa delta eta. Now they call eta mu. Now they call me epsilon omega. And you see all the stuff above it. Some of the letters. Now, it means something like this definition. To be away from home. Absent. You see, that's tough. When you make your exodus, okay, you're moving away from your from your uh, earthly tent or house. Okay? That's just a deal. Now, um, let's look at another Greek word. Let's look at the arrival of, 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 the, of the believer. To other everlasting habitations, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, this Greek word is tagged by a 1736, and it's actually the Greek word "n." You see, it's not "ek," it's "n." "N de meo," "n de meo," or "in house," if you will. Right? What's the definition? The definition okay, is to be in one's own country to be at home you see that's 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 the deal to be at home huh to be at home to be absent from the body okay or absent ab absent from one's uh, uh uh home is to be present with the lord or is to be okay in one's own home yet again but with the Lord, because, you know, um, uh, when we're living here, we're absent from the Lord, in a sense. You understand what I'm saying? But when we go to be with Him, when we make our departure, and that's uh, uh, the Greek word, analusai, that's an infinitive there, infinitive morphine, psi, right? Uh, I believe that's uh, first arrows, infinitive uh, active morphine, okay? So that's just the deal. Now let's just read this to just to cap off uh, everything, basically. From uh, verse 8, and this is actually from uh, the text that we're studying from, okay? Uh, 2 Corinthians. Thus we are uh, full of courage. Therefore we are full of courage and uh, would prefer to be away from the body or away from the home if you will okay and at home at uh, and and it says over here and at home with the lord and at home with the lord so away from this home but at home with the lord So away from home, going to our home. Away from this uh, earthly body, going to a spiritual body, but one, uh, uh, a body that has substance, that has reality. You understand what I'm saying? And I think that uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4, uh, took care of the idea that, yes, even though it's called spiritual, it still has uh, physical physical attributes as Angelo Kion is given glory to the God of Israel. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time of Jesus at those words. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up and please leave a comment on the screen. Thank you.